This is Guar Marial. He and his family fled from Sudan and took refuge in the United States. Recently, his countrymen established South Sudan, and Marial wanted to show his support for them by representing them in the 2012 Olympic Marathon. Problem was, he was not in Sudan, and he's not an American citizen. A man without a country, he applied for a spot in the London Games anyway. And it was granted to him, although not as an athlete for the U.S. or South Sudan. Instead, he ran under the anonymous designation IOA, Independent Olympic Athlete. He didn't let that bother him. His mission was to bring the name of his people to the world. And he did. He finished the marathon and brought honor to his nation. All you Lolo defenders out there, how dare you call her a role model when men like Marial exist? How dare you waste even one second covering her when true heroes go without recognition? This is what it means to be an athlete. You represent your people, not your sponsors and not yourself either. You won't see him doing any nude spreads for ESPN magazine. No Red Bull commercials either. You see, he knows what sports are all about. To Guar Marial, it's not just a game. But the problem here is the media isn't looking to eat from a banquet table. They don't even want to feed from a slop trough anymore. They prefer to eat straight from the toilet. The line between athletics and celebrity has been erased. It's not enough anymore to just be a stellar athlete. You have to go to the parties with the jet set, date actors, singers, or big-time athletes to get any recognition now. Who cares what's going on on the field? They want to know what's going on in your bedroom. Whomever is willing to divulge the most details wins. It's not about sports. It's about competing for a slot in the cult of celebrity. Sports statistics are worthless now. Salacious celebrity gossip is what sells. It's no accident that both Reggie Bush and Tony Romo had the most media exposure when their train wreck gal pals were also hanging around them. When they left, so did the cameras. You see, the media wants this psycho celebrity culture to become the new normal, and they're not leaving it to chance. They even scold the public for not getting it. Gutter celebrityhood now defines the media and the media now defines the culture. So every aspect of the society will become the same flash and trash sewer as everyone stampedes to degrade themselves since that's now the surest road to success. This is the game. Thanks for playing. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned, but when I talk about sports, the entire conversation is about, well, sports. Stats, performance, records, their latest game. What I'm not used to is the entire conversation being about their latest magazine cover, or their latest Twitter tweet, or product endorsement. The media has assumed that their insane fixation on blondes, boobs, and bad behavior is ours as well that the vapid values of the newsroom are also the values of the living room. Well, given how eagerly some people have taken to defending Lolomania, perhaps they are right. See, I understand the media's stake in all this. Their new business model is flash and trash. They will hide behind the excuse that they're a business and it's all about money. That may be good enough for them, but it's not good enough for me. And it shouldn't be good enough for you either. But for far too many people, it is. What I don't understand is what the society's stake is in defending this sewer the media is creating. The world has been turned on its head, virtually overnight. People attacked Jer Longman as a sexist. I always thought that objectifying women, sexualizing them, and reducing them to pieces of meat was sexist. But it's women who are mainly leading the charge to demonize the Times columnist. Why? Because women have disproportionately benefited from the pornification of the media. As the media has become more sex-driven, it's also become more female-oriented. Women see certain advantages in sex as their power, because it's easy power. Long as she's not a porn star, and as long as she has some connection, however flimsy, to the Olympics, women will defend her, and Lolo will continue to profit from it personally. They will convince themselves that a failed Olympian acting the whore is somehow better than Kim Kardashian. 
Never mind that she single-handedly knocked female athletes back 50 years. Women, you have gone on record defending this kind of objectification of female athletes. Next time someone decides to objectify you, and mark my words, that won't be long from now, you have no leg to stand on when you try to take offense. Check out the message boards of the websites that covered the fall of Lolo Jones. Her defenders even go so far as to call her a role model. Now that alone should tell you how warped the values of most people are. What makes her a role model? Her impoverished childhood? There's nothing she said about herself that doesn't apply to Wells or Harper. But the difference is Wells and Harper have overcome so much more. And yes, Kelly Wells doesn't talk about her virginity. That's because she lost hers when her stepfather raped her as a child. Lolo Jones does commercials showing how her white mother supports her so much. Kelly Wells lost her mother when her rapist stepfather killed them both. Lolo Jones brags about and praises herself. Not so long ago, we all understood this to be rotten behavior by an athlete. Today, it makes you a role model. Kelly Wells has been the picture of modesty and humility, and she has been her entire career. And yet, there's been an orgy of abuse and condemnation heaped on her and Harper, and for what? Because when the media gets caught in a lie, they don't blame themselves. They blame the whistleblowers. A role model distinguishes themselves by what they do. You don't slap that label on just anyone. And if you're going to call Lolo Jones a role model, then please tell me what do you call Guar Marial or Kelly Wells? You see, Lolo Jones is not in the same galaxy as these two real athletes. Yet she's given the type of praise that until now was only reserved for people like them. Did the media lie about their reasons for pushing Lolo? Of course they did. And even Lolo's defenders concede that it's blatant media manipulation. But my question to you is, why doesn't that bother you? You need to understand when the media lies to you, it is not okay. Because if they'll lie to you about this, what else will they lie about? And if you gladly accept a lie this obvious, what other lies are you willing to swallow? That's what this video is all about. You need to realize that about the media. Lolo Jones doesn't have some irresistible appeal. She doesn't even have an interesting story. The media glommed onto her because she's light-skinned and, by their standards, photogenic. And they thought they could use her. And so they did. She eventually figured out that it was her picture they wanted, and so she gave them plenty of those. She also noticed that no matter how many times she lost, the media still treated her like a victorious hero. Lolo figured out well before anyone that her place in the world had long since stopped being about sports. She was a sports model. She understood that, even if her fans did not. None of Lolo Jones's self-promotion that the media lauds her for has anything to do with athletics whatsoever. However, it does have everything to do with sex and celebrity gossip, which to the media is far more valuable. Lolo Jones understands that the so-called sports media hasn't given a damn about sports in nearly a decade. It's all about sex, scandals, wild behavior, and who's dating whom. Some say that's the way the media is and that this is okay. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not okay. Every aspect of the media, from sports to politics, has become nothing more than a branch of the media's core, which is sex and celebrity. It seems there's no area of society the media sees as worth reporting on unless it involves their two favorite subjects. America is in severe trouble right now. We may well be in our death throes, and we can't even begin a conversation on how to turn this thing around because the very communication apparatus we need to do that is obsessed with everything except what we need. Education, health care, employment, the judicial system, social policy, these things don't involve sex or celebrity, so we don't talk about it. Lolomania is one aspect of a disease that has infected the entire body politic of this society. And the corrosive impact of this subtle brainwashing is most clear when one sees how people mindlessly defend it. Christianity has become the back office of right-wing politics. So, even though Lolo has been acting like a harlot for years, so-called Christians defend her because she claims to be a virgin?
And when the New York Times exposed her, these Christians immediately attacked the Times as being a liberal, i.e. unchristian rag. These are not people anymore, these are animals, reacting like Pavlovian dogs. When you defend Lolo Jones, this is what you're defending. And you can't hide behind the cop-out that, well, it's impossible to influence the media anyway. Because you had no problem whatsoever attacking the New York Times for criticizing Lolo. You weren't passive and unconcerned then. The problem here is that the media is playing a sick game of moral relativism, and most people have decided to play along. ESPN does a softcore porn issue, and people defend it with stupid rhetoric like, well, this is just the way God made us. Well, God also made us without houses, without cars, and without the internet. Funny how you don't feel the need to go without any of those. You know, back in the 60s, it might have been cute to talk that hippie anything goes crap, but this is 2012. We've had 50 years of that nothing is shameful stupidity. As a result, everything is a crying shame. It's time to grow up. This isn't about being prudish. It's about propriety. We're drowning in smut, celebrity, and capricious nonsense. This is changing the way we think and act. When achievement is devalued, then society itself grinds to a halt. When attention is what social advantage becomes based on, who's going to do the basic work of maintaining or creating what we need? I use sports as an example because it's an arena we can all understand, but we see this confusion of values at all levels of society. Forget about what this type of speculant single-mindedness does to sports. What does it do to the civilization? In closing, I have some encouraging words for Dawn Harper and Kelly Wells. Keep your heads up. There's an army of self-hating black people, women with a broken moral compass, and white males looking to hold on to their privilege. You have exposed them, and that's why you've come under fire. But that can be a good thing. If you're made of straw and fluff, then fire will consume you whole. On the other hand, if you're made of gold, silver, or bronze, then you are only purified in fire. You reminded people that this was a sport, not an ogling contest. You also reminded the white media and their self-hating black allies that the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. But you did so much more than that. You fought the good fight and did it with class, and you won. What you've done will stand as long as there's an Olympic Games. You can brag about your medals the rest of your lives. You've earned it. Because while your names are now in the history books, Lolo Jones's name is on the cover of some men's magazine somewhere. The reason you've drawn so much flack is because in this day and age, whites still control the media, and a lot of blacks utterly hate dark skin. There's no way to win the approval of either one of these groups, so don't even try. What they wanted was for you to shut up and engage in Lolo mania along with them. And what you did instead was to ask, why? You merely said what was on the tip of everyone's tongue, but too many were too scared to ask. You stepped over the line for all of us and gave us all the courage and permission to say what we were all thinking. And for that, we're grateful. But most of all, you taught us that hype doesn't last. Victory does. Remember that. In this life, you don't always get what you want. Sometimes, you just get what you need. And that is enough.